Nothing in life is to be feared. It is only to be understood. Now, it is time to understand more so that we fear less. That's such a beautiful quote by Marie Curie. The famous personality who mentioned this. Now, when it comes to my practice as a neurologist for the last 32 years, the kind of diseases, the kind of disorders, the kind of illnesses which come to me, most of them which are incurable, most of them which are hopeless, this is what I have been trying over the last several weeks to come to you every now and then and make you understand these diseases to allay your anxiety, to remove your fear and give you hope. Hey guys, Dr. Naeem Sadiq with you once again. Today, talking about the very devastating, the dreaded disorder, motor neuron disease known as MND or also known as ALS. Let us try to understand as to what is this disease, how does it happen, why does it happen, whom does it affect, what are the symptoms, what is the mechanism, how can this be treated and what do we offer at Plexus Neuro and Stem Cell Research Center. You must have heard of Stephen Hawking. Well, he is very famous physicist who was afflicted with this illness at the age of 23 years. And he's one of the very few people who survived this disease for more than 40 years. He died recently about two years back. The incidence is around 120,000 people are affected by this disease every year. By and large, it affects people over the age of 40. But yes, like I mentioned to you about Stephen Hawking, there are several cases, several people who have come to me and to so many other people all over the world who get affected in their 20s and 30s as well. In 90% of cases, the onset is sudden. That's how the patient comes, you know. He was all right a few days back and suddenly he is unable to walk now or he's unable to talk now or he's unable to move his hands or whatever. But there are a small portion, maybe around 10% of cases where there is some genetic uh, transmission. What is the exact cause of this disease? We do not know. There are millions of dollars being spent on this. You all must have heard of the famous uh, ice bucket challenge which started off in the summer of 2014 where the ALS Foundation started this. They got huge donations. I think the first year it was $115 million and then it has been continued till 2019. Uh, this, this money is being used to find out the cause of this disease so that they can plan a treatment, they can find a remedy to this dreaded disease. So talking a little more about the causes, you know, that's, that's, that's the most common question which almost every patient or their relative asks me, okay, why did this happen? What are the factors which led to this disease? So that is where the research is on and uh, people are yet to find as to what exactly is responsible. Now, my answer to all these people is that, well, it is like an accident. But I was driving peacefully, everything was happening, and then suddenly, just in, in a few moments, everything stopped. So, diseases like ALS, diseases like cancer, these are accidents. We, as of now, have no clue. There could be environmental factors, but one thing which has been coming pre prominently in research is that there is a down-regulation of the immune response, and the immune cells the immune mechanism is down-regulated, so that, that, could, that could hold a lot of promise for planning the treatment options. What is the mechanism? How does a patient with ALS start getting weakness or all the symptoms? 
If you remember my earlier videos, which I've been talking about in my previous discussions, especially this, in, in this uh, discussion on stroke, how the brain controls every single function of our body. Now, elaborating a little more on that, pertaining to the mechanism of action of symptoms in, uh, the motor, in uh, motor neuron disease. In the brain, we have neurons, which are known as upper motor neurons, these fire the signal. Now that signal is transmitted to neurons in the spinal cord, which are known as lower motor neurons. They are much lower than the brain. Now from these, the lower motor neurons, neurons transmit the signal to the nerves, which innovate the muscles and those muscles contract. For instance, now I want to move my hand, move my elbow here, flex. So my the motor neuron in my brain fires, the signal goes to the nerves in the spinal cord. From the spinal cord, it goes to the nerves here and these muscles are flexed. Similarly, all the skeletal muscles function wherein a person is able to carry out the motor acts, be it walking, being move, movement with the hands, shoulders, upper limbs, lower limbs, whatever. In motor neuron disease, these neurons stop firing. Now, depending on which part of the uh, central nervous system neurons stop firing, we have three different variants. If it is only the brain, or if it is brain and spinal cord, or if it is only the spinal cord. If it is the neurons of the brain and the spinal cord, the upper motor and the lower motor neuron, it is described as ALS. If it's only the upper motor neuron, it is known as primary lateral sclerosis. And if it is only the lower motor neuron, that is of the spinal cord, it is known as progressive muscular atrophy. Now, these are the three different variants, but the mechanism remains the same. That is lack of firing in the neurons, whether it is the neurons of the brain or, or the neurons of the spinal cord. Right, now coming to the symptoms. 80% of patients with MND present with weakness in the limbs. By limbs, I mean the upper limbs, that is the arm and the lower limb, which is the legs. It could start with weakness in the lower limbs, difficulty in walking, problem in balance, difficulty in uh, standing from sitting position. It could also start in the upper limbs where people have uh, problems uh, lifting the shoulder or gripping things using the hands, you know, for fine movements or whatever. About 18 to 19% of patients, the onset is bulbar. Now, what do you mean by bulbar? By bulbar, we mean speech and swallowing. Where the person's speech is affected, it is it's unclear. People cannot comprehend what a person is trying to speak and swallowing. The patient is unable to swallow both liquids and solids. There's a very minor portion, maybe about one to two percent of people present with respiratory weakness as the onset. Generally in ALS, the respiratory problem comes last, but in a very small percentage of very unfortunate people, it starts off with the respiratory weakness. Now the course of the illness it is very rapid, very, very rapid. It, in, 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 a, in, a, in a few months to years, the disease which started as just mild weakness of the thumb and the index finger might gradually progress on to weakness in the entire body, weakness in the bulb, un, unable to speak, unable to swallow, and might ultimately land on a ventilator in an ICU. Now, how soon the disease progresses is anybody's guess. But what we have seen across all, all, all um, over the world is that, you know, it's about two to five years. Very, very rapid progression, very rapid progression. What do we do for this? How do we stop this? Everybody who comes to me asks me, can you cure this? I wish I could say yes. They ask me, 100% can he come back to normal? I wish I could say yes. But then, yes, in our arsenal, drugs which we have are only two. One is Riluzol, the second is Etaveron. These have been approved. We've been using them. We've been using Riluzol 
you know, for the last two decades almost, results have been plus minus. There are a few patients whose life expectancy we have been able to increase, whose onset of breathing difficulty we have been able to delay. But then for the last seven to eight years at Plexus, what we are doing is something totally novel, something, something totally new. And by God's grace, we have had amazing results. What do we do here? We make use of the theory where um, when, we, when we spoke about the causes, if you remember, I mentioned the theory about the immune down regulation, the immune system being reduced has, has been popping up. So we have been using stem cells for these patients and we have had very good results as of now. Majority of patients, we have been able to control the disease so that it has not progressed. There is a significant proportion of patients where we have delayed the progression of the disease. And yes, there is, there is a very, very significant number of people where we have got improvement, improvement in their breathing, improvement in their speech quality, improvement in their swallowing, definitely. And yes, we have got improvement in their sit to stand, ability to walk, ability to balance, ability to use their hands. In fact, we have had patients where patients have come to us with demands which, which are unimaginable. There was one patient who came and asked us to teach him how to clip his nails. Yes, we did it. So yes, we have had very good success wherein we have used a combination of stem cell therapy and our tailor-made customized rehabilitation program. So this has been a short description about this dreaded disease so that you understand what it is and you understand case where there is no hope. We are here to give hope and to try to save so many lives and make their lives and the lives of their near and dear ones much, much better. So guys, if you have any comments, if you have any questions, I'll be glad to answer them, post them on our social media, WhatsApp me, send me an email, visit me in person. I'm here. I'm glad to, I'll be glad to answer all your questions. And yes, follow us on our social media. Keep looking for updates. I'll be back with you with another very, very interesting discussion on yet another dreaded disease. Till then, have a good evening, be safe, stay healthy and don't fear.